I look like Queen Latifah. No, 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 no. I look like Baby D. I look like Mike Epps is about to tell you that I know about all the snacks <laughs> before they come out. The the Twinkie with the glitters in it. <laughs> ah! <laughs> Hi guys, <laughs> welcome back to my channel. If you don't know that reference, then I don't know that we could really be friends. <laughs> But if you do know where I got that from, um, leave the answer in the comments down below. Or, no, 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 I have one better. Leave a quote from the movie in the comments or any one of the movies in that franchise. Just leave it in the comments and, you know, we'll let everybody else guess. <laughs> but anyway, if you know me, you know that as much as I love to read, I also love to buy books. It is my thing. It soothes my soul. It makes me feel good. It helps me sleep at night. So in today's video, we are going to be doing a very, very large, a very, very large, a very, very large book haul. Oh. <laughs> there are 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 29, 30, 31, 31 books in this book haul. So if you like to hear it, here we go. Oh, wait. Before we start, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Look at the links in the underneath of bar, baby, because there's information in there that you probably need and that you're probably going to ask for. It's in the underneath a bar. And hit that like button because I know you like the video. You back. I saw you. You watched all of the other videos and thought you were just going to sneak over here without subscribing and hitting that like button. I caught you. I caught you. <laughs> if you like to hear, here we go. So this is not going to be in any particular order except for the first two books that I'm going to show you because they are important. So if you follow me on Instagram, which if you are not following me on Instagram, what is wrong with you? Why are you not? Why you? Why are we not friends over there? What's what's the matter? I don't under what I don't understand. But if you follow me on Instagram, you know that I'm back in therapy um, because. I needed new coping mechanisms. There are a lot of things about me that I need to heal and overcome. And I feel like I've always been an advocate for therapy. But now that I'm seeing even more change in myself and seeing how much it helps me, we all should go to therapy. So the first book that I'm going to show you is called The Body Keeps Score by Vessel van der Kolk, M.D., um this is a book that my therapist recommended to me um so this says trauma is a fact of life veterans and their families deal with the painful aftermath of combat one in five americans have been molested one in five americans have been molested one in four grew up with alcoholics one in three have engaged in physical violence dr bezel van der kolk one of the world's foremost experts on trauma, has spent over three decades working with survivors. In The Body Keeps a Score, he uses recent scientific advances to show how trauma literally reshapes body, both body and brain, compromising sufferers' capacity for pleasure, engagement, self-control, and trust. He explores innovative treatments from neural feedback in meditation to sports, drama, and yoga that offer new paths to recovery by activating the brain's natural neuroplasticity. Based on Dr. Van der Kolk's own research and that of other lead leading specialists, the Body Keeps Score exposes the tremendous power of our relationships both to hurt and to heal and offers new hope for reclaiming lives. So the reason my therapist suggested this for me is because um, I brought up how... Um, we were talking about triggers and how I really wanted better coping skills um, because the ones that I had, it wasn't like alcohol or drugs or anything like that. I just would sleep. 
like if something triggered me and it triggered me bad enough like I'm just gonna go to sleep and I don't give a damn about nothing else um my room would get super messy <laughs> work would fall to the wayside the book club would fall to the wayside so she was explaining to me that your body and your brain don't necessarily know that trauma happened to you all of these years ago like your body just your body and your brain just acknowledge it as if it's new as if it happened yesterday whereas you know like you're aware that oh this happened to me nine years ago <sighs> so on and so forth so she suggested since I'm a reader that I read this um it is also on audiobook platforms such as audible I'm sure you can find it um other places too so this I will be reading um eventually I'm probably going to start it soon um, I didn't put it in my my July TBR but it's like the invisible book that's up there because that's probably going to take me a little bit while to read but I do plan to start it um, this month. Another book that I got because when I was looking for the Body Keep Score which is in the psychological section of your bookstore um whether it be Barnes and Nobles or a local independent bookshop, it, it will be in the psychological section. Um, I found Black Girl in Love with Herself by Trey Anthony. Um, and one, you guys know how I feel about Black women on book covers, so I had to have this off the strength of that. But also, <sighs> representation. Um, a lot of the self-help books that are out there have white women on them. Um, and they are usually white women that are rich and work from home because their husbands make enough money so that they can do that and they're taking care of their kids and all of that stuff which is not taking away from who they are as a woman but that is not the realistic view of what women look like in America we all are not white <laughs> we all are not stay-at-home moms we all don't have the massive amount of time in the world to write a book about how we decided to you know learn to love ourselves as a stay-at-home mom like it's just not realistic and it can be hard speaking from experience prior to me um getting more serious about therapy I would look at these books and I would want to read them but I wasn't able to relate um so this this is important um to see a woman that looks like me and that is also having similar struggles to what I have right or even just to know that a woman like me struggles mentally is important so um this says a guide to self-love healing and creating the life you truly deserve after a lifetime of near of never fully relating to the personal development experts because of the color of her skin award-winning award-winning writer playwright and lifestyle coach Trey Anthony has written the book she needed to read as a black woman trying to navigate a world that often acts like she doesn't exist. On the outside, Trey was overachieving, reliable, and strong black woman she was raised to be. But on the inside, the pressure of sacrificing her own needs to please others was building. Trey was taught that self-love and expressing emotions were signs of weakness. Trey wa, uh, were signs of weakness, creating an unhealthy dynamic that had her facing burnout and hitting rock bottom, even as she achieved success beyond her wildest dreams. In Black Girl in Love with Herself, Trey breaks down the lessons and the tools that she used to heal herself, including how to set clear and healthy boundaries, even with people who raised you, quit being the family ATM, sort out who is a real friend and who is just there for parties and gossip, confront microaggressions at work without missing a beat, forget who black women are supposed to be, and fall in love with yourself. So if you are a black girl and you feel like you need some help and you are apprehensive about therapy because we are not necessarily raised in a community that thinks that therapy is a necessity, this may help you. Um, I very much look forward to reading this um, and it just is refreshing to see a black woman <laughs> this this is refreshing and the idea that a black girl can be in love in general right not just with a 
partner like that is also something representation matters in but the fact that a black girl can be in love with herself and not necessarily care about what everybody else has to say about her um is is needed so i was really happy to see this so those were the two mental health books that i kind of wanted to start out with the rest of this it's not going to be in any order at all i'm just picking it up i've gotten these over the last few months um so yeah don't fall don't fall don't fall don't fall okay so first we're going to start with the immortals of tehran by ali Ar aragi ali aragi i believe so apparently i have the hard copy of this um because Shelby is always buying doubles, but whatever. So this says, a sweeping multi-generational epic. This stunning debut heralds the arrival of a unique new literary voice. As a child living in his family's apple orchard, Ahmad treasure, treasures his great, 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 great grandfather's every mesmerizing word, especially when the seemingly immortal elder tells him the tale of a centuries-old family curse and Ahmad's own fate faded role in the story and Ahmad is as and as Ahmad grows up and struggles to keep his family together through decades of famine loss political turmoil in Iran each turn of his life is a surprise from street brawler to father of two unusually gifted daughters from radical poet to political to politician with a target on his back these lives and many unforgettable stories alongside his converge and catch on fire at the center of the revolution rooted in iran's tumultuous history struck through with magical realism ali aragi waves interlocking narratives and timelines to create a family saga about the encantory powers of words and revolutionary power of love family and poetry so the reason that i picked this up is because i've just been really interested in authors from the middle east and that area of the world i read i don't know if it's anywhere where i can like pull it out to show you right now but the book is called aria i can't remember if i remember to i'll post a picture of it um but it was similar to the writing style that this is claiming to be so this I was really interested because I liked Aria it was a long story um it was an epic it went on forever but the how it tied together was really good so I'm interested to see how this is next we have Blacktop Wasteland by S.A. Cosby um something else that I have the hard copy of um but i want to keep that nice and pretty so i got this one this one is once known as the best getaway driver east of the mississippi um bogard bug montag has never stopped looking over his shoulder he knows that no matter how long he has been out of the life no one ever gets out completely now bug is an honest mechanic a loving husband and a hard-working dad but when his carefully built new life begins to crumble, a former associate comes calling with a can't-miss jewelry store heist. Bug feels he has no choice but to get back into the driver's seat. Haunted by the ghost of who he used to be and the father who disappeared when he needed him most, Bug must find a way to navigate this blacktop wasteland or die trying. It sounds super interesting to me. I think technically this is a thriller, which I've been looking for more of yeah suspense fiction um and it's by a black author S.A. Cosby is a black man um and however I can support black men I will so there's that there's a his other book recently came out I'll we'll show that it is called Razor Blade Tears and this one sounds really interesting too so it says, Ike Randolph has been out of jail for 15 years with not so much as a speeding ticket in all that time. But a black man, but a black man with cops at the front door knows to be afraid. Message. The last thing he expects is to hear that his son Isaiah has been murdered alongside, along with Isaiah's white husband, Derek. Ike has never fully accepted his son, but is devastated by his loss. Derek's father, Buddy Lee, 
was almost as ashamed of Derek for being gay as Derek was ashamed of his father's criminal record. Buddy Lee still has contacts in the underworld though and he wants to know who killed his boy. Ike and Buddy Lee, two ex-cons with a little in common other than a criminal past and a love for their dead sons band together in their desperate desire for revenge. In their quest to do better for their sons in death than they did in life, these hardened men will confront their own prejudices about their sons and each other as they rain down vengeance upon those who hurt their boys. Provocative and face and fast paced, razor blade tears is a story of bloody retribution, heartfelt change, and maybe even redemption. So these both sound really, really good. Um it also makes me want to look up the author and like what his life was about. Um, but yeah, these sound really good. Next, I got Animal by Lisa Tadio, I think her name is. Um, so now let's, let's talk for a minute. So this is the author that wrote Three Women, um, a book that I despise, not because the writing was bad, which is why I picked up her next book. I don't like that book because they advertised it as a book about women's sexuality and honestly all of the women in that book were facing trauma and your trauma is not you becoming one with your sexuality or exploring your sexuality the things that that happen to you don't necessarily define you so a woman being well a girl being taken advantage of by her high school teacher that she thought she was in love with is not her finding her sexuality or exploring her sexuality that is her being molested and taken advantage of by an older man that should have known fucking better does that make sense so i don't like how that book there, there were other characters in the book but i don't like how that book was portrayed and i don't like how a lot of women read that book and were like oh yeah i can totally relate yeah you can relate to the trauma sis that you probably need to sit down and talk to somebody about and unpack because not that's anyway that's that so I picked this one up because I feel like she might be a better writer a better fiction writer because the writing wasn't the same it just what they said that book was about and what that book is actually about is is a lie somebody lied okay so this one it says I'm depraved I hope you like me Joan has spent a lifetime enduring the cruel <laughs> cruelties of men girl me too who hasn't but when one of them commits a shocking act of violence in front of her she flees new york city in the search of alice the only person alive who can help her make sense of her past in the sweltering hills above los angeles joan unravels a horrific event she witnessed as a child that has haunted her every waking moment while forging the power to finally strike back here is an electrifying debut novel from lisa to Dio, author of the number one New York Times bestseller, International Phenomenon, Three Women, which was named to more than 30 best of the year lists and held a dazzling achievement. A heartbreaking, gripping, astonishing masterpiece, Animal is a depiction of female rage at its rawest and visceral exploration of the fallout from a male-dominated society with writing that scorches and mesmerizes to Dio illustrates one woman's exhilarating transformation from prey to predator. That doesn't sound bad. I just, I want to give her a second chance because I have never in my life said that I hated a book so much as much as I said three women was terrible and that I felt like it should burn in hell um I said very terrible things about that book and I felt bad because I am not that kind of person so I just bought this book and if this one is also as well bad I'm gonna be upset and I'm gonna have to talk to Lisa myself next we have girl in the walls I, why in God's name is somebody living in the walls that is exactly what I said the first time that I saw this book so I just picked it up never read the synopsis
Ellis knows every inch of the house. She knows which boards will creak. She knows where the gaps are in the walls. She knows which parts uh, can take her in, hide her away. It's home after all. The home her parents made for her before they were taken away from her in a car crash. Oh, that's so sad. And home is where you stay no matter what. That's not true. Eddie is a teenager trying to forget about the girl he sometimes sees out of the corner of his eye. But when his hot-headed older brother senses her too, they are forced with the question of how to get rid of someone they aren't sure even exists. As they try to cast her out, they un they unwittingly bring an unexpected and far more real threat to their doorstep. Written with grace and enormous heart, Girl on the Walls is a novel about carrying on through grief, forging unconventional friendships, and realizing little by little that we don't need fear, need to fear what we do not understand. So, I'm going to tell you how I think this book is going to go. And then when I read it, I'll do a review for it. Somebody remind me about that. Homegirl ain't even supposed to really be in that house. And she's still living in that house after her father is dead. And she think one of them boys is cute. So she be in the windows like a creeper looking or whatever. So they try to sneak in the house and she try to kill them. That's how it's going to go. Okay, next we have The Other Black Girl by Zakia delilah harris um this is actually a book club pick for shelby in the book club if you are not a part of my book club why are you not a part of the book club it's really easy to be a part of all you have to do is show up to our live discussions i post the books for the following month the 10th of every month um i've posted when you guys see this excuse me i've posted up until October I believe you just got to scroll back a little bit but I do a reminder post and then the first of every month I post what the book is we have book discussions twice a month so yeah all you have to do is just show up for the book discussions read the book tell me how you feel about it come hang out whatever so this is about um I believe that this is a thriller as well can y'all see what kind of mood I am in hold on a second suspense fiction so this says 26 year old editorial assistant nella rogers is pretty tired of being the only black girl at wagner books so of course she's excited when hazel may mccall starts working in the cubicle besides her born and raised in harlem hayden hazel exudes the confidence and charm that nella never has never quite possessed. But they've only just started swapping emails and natural hair care regimens when a string of unsettling events causes Nella to become public enemy number one and Hazel, the office darling. And then the notes start to appear on Nella's desk. Leave Wagner now. Nella can't believe that Hazel's been leaving the notes. Despite her crude code switching and competitive vibes, the new black girl doesn't seem that hostile but as Nella begins to spiral obsess and ultimately uncover sinister forces at play she risks losing much more than her career the stakes are higher than she could have imagined far beyond P&Ls and promotions propulsive darkly funny and endlessly surprising the other black girl is a whip smart commentary on diversity in the workplace it brims on it brims with the cringy all too real struggles of being a black girl in a largely white industry but also resonate with resonates with anyone who who's ever felt manipulated or outmaneuvered threatened or overlooked as disturbing as it is tender this novel that questions the silence we trade for success asks in the end what whether that sacrifice can ever truly be worth it so of course written by black women i've heard mixed reviews on this one so we'll see how that one is next we have rainbow milk by paul mendez y'all see i've really been shopping right so this one i got this because i really like the cover there's a black man on the cover so i just had to have it i didn't really care what it was about to be honest um, so this says, in the 1950s, ex-boxer Norman Alonzo is, is a determined and humble Jamaican. Now, I ain't met a Jamaican that was humble before, but okay. Who has immigrated to Britain with his wife and children to se secure a brighter future. Blighted with unexpected illness and racism, Norman and his family are resilient, 
but are all too aware that they will need more than just hope to survive in their new country. At the turn of the millennium, Jesse seeks a fresh start in London, escaping a broken family, a repressive religious community, and his depressed hometown in the industrial black country. But once he arrives, he finds himself at a loss for a new center of gravity and turns to sex work, music, and art to create his own notions of love, masculinity, and spirituality. A wholly original novel as tender as it is visceral, Rainbow Milk is a power is a powerful celebration of self discovery and intersectionality. Sounded really good. Um sounds different again black men on the cover this also goes for representation like when there are black people on the cover of things i'm just gonna buy it like if it turns out to be good cool whatever i have to have it next we have light seekers by femi coyote coyote maybe i don't know sorry if i mispronounced this one was really interesting so i do a lot of book buying like because i really like to buy books <laughs> because i love them i mean it could be drugs guys don't judge me but also um because i have the book club now a lot of it is kind of just scouting out is this something that i would want to read and talk about with the book club is this something that I want to introduce to a bunch of different people? Like, that's a lot of it. And this was one of those books for me. Like, I saw this and I was like, oh, this might be a good, um, a good book. And also, as well, I like, um, Nigerian literature. Um, so earlier this year, I read The Secret Lives of Baba Segi's wives and I really enjoyed that um I guess African literature in general um we read A Girl is a Body of Water I also read The Death of Vivek Oji and really really enjoyed the style of writing that came along with it so that's another reason why I picked this up so this one says an investigative psychological or an investigative psychologist travels to a Nigerian town to uncover the truth about the murder of three university students when Dr. Philip Taiwu is called on by a powerful Nigerian politician to investigate the public torture and murder of three university students in, revo in remote Port Harcourt, he has no idea what he's about to be involved to be. Girl, he has no idea that he's about to be enveloped by a perilous case that is far from cold. Philip is not a detective. He's an investigative psychologist, an academic more interested in figuring out why, figuring out the why of a crime than actually solving it. But when he steps off the plane into a dizzying frenzy of the airport, he soon realizes that the murder of the Oriki three isn't as straightforward as he thought. With the help of his loyal and streetwise personal driver, Chica, Philip must outmaneuver those actively conspiring against him to piece together the truth of what happened to these three three students a thrilling an atmospheric mystery and an unforgettable portrait of the contemporary nigerian socio-political landscape light seekers is a wrenching novel tackling the porousness between the first and the third worlds the enduring strength of tribalism and homeland identity and the human need for connection in the face of isolation that sounds really good to me i've been on a hunt for more thrillers written by black people more suspense written by black people i just feel like it's really interesting the whole stack almost filled up. okay next book we have is the girl with stars in her eyes by zeo i'm gonna say that this is azelrod because x is for xylophone so I think that that's how that goes. I'm not sure if I'm mispronouncing it, sorry. But this is a romance. Um, you guys know that I read, well, we read Seven Days in June by Tia Williams as the June book club pick. And I am obsessed and want to read all of the romance now. I don't know who I am and what they did with Shelby. <laughs> but this was all the romance 
table in the bookstore um and again black girl on the cover who actually looks to me a lot like that artist her um h-e-r i don't know i'm i'm just gonna call it her because what did Eddie murphy say her mama named her so i'm gonna call her if you also as well know what that <laughs> what, what movie that's from put that in the comments too but this one says growing up in dive bars all along the east coast tony bennett's guitar was her only companion until she met sebastian quick seb was a little older a lot wiser and before long he was tony's way out promising they'd escape their stifling small town together then seb turned 18 and split out without looking back now tony's all grown up making a name for herself in philadelphia's indie music scene when a friend suggests that she tries out a new up-and-coming band tony decides to take the chance strong feminist and fierce as tony b and the lilies are the perfect match except seb's now moonlighting as their manager whatever tony can handle it no problem or it wouldn't be if seb didn't still hold a piece of her heart not to mention the key to her future this sounds very interesting um so we'll see how it is i don't really know when i plan on reading it but we'll see what happens so that's that next we have something that was sent to me from harper collins thank you harper collins for always sending me really really good books this one's called No One Will Miss Her by Kat Rosenfield. This doesn't come out until October. This is also as well a suspense fiction thriller situation. Um, Y'all pay attention to me. Thank you very much. So this says dark, deft, murderous, and witty. No One Will Miss Her tackles the thorny issues of identity and belonging at the heart of women's lives on a beautiful october morning in rural maine a homicide investigator from the big city pulls into a hard look town of copper falls the local junkyard is burning and the town pariah lizzie Allett Allett is dead with her husband Dwayne nowhere to be found as as scandal ripples through the community detective ian bird's inquiries unexpectedly lead him away from the small town maine to a swank city town house several a swank city townhouse several hours south adrian richards blonde and fabulous social media influencer and wife of a disgraced billionaire had been renting lizzie's tiny like home as a country getaway even though copper falls is anything but a resort town as adrian's connection to the case becomes clear so too does her connection to lizzie who narrates their story beyond the grave each woman is desperately lonely in her own way and they navigate a relationship that cuts across glass boundaries transactional complicated and finally deadly a gone girl for the gig economy this is a story of privilege identity cutting blah, blah, blah. so it sounds interesting um i kind of just want to know who killed um lizzie and then we can get over it i'm pretty sure it might have something to do with let's see this is gonna be another one that i'm gonna guess and then once i read it i'll review it um maybe lizzie wasn't all that much of the pariah and adrian is jealous that lizzie has a better life than she does and like even though adrian is supposed to have this like really big fancy life she probably doesn't really have it because she's on social media all the time and content creating is hard and then she sees lizzie, lizzie just renting out her property so she probably killed her because she's jealous we'll see another book that i got sent in the mail is the wolf and the Woods woodsman by ava reed i posted this on the instagram page um, this is a magical realism type situation. So it says, in her forest veiled pagan village, Evic is the only woman without power, making her an outcast clearly abandoned by the gods. The villagers blame her corrupted bloodline. 
Her father was a Yahuli man, one of the much loathed servants of the fanatical king. When soldiers arrived for the holy order of woodsmen to claim a pagan girl for the king's blood sac sacrifice, Evic is betrayed by her fellow villagers and surrounded. But when the monsters attack the woodsmen and their captive and rout, slaughtering everyone but Evic and the cold one-eyed captain, the two have no choice but to rely on one another. Except the captain is no ordinary woodsman. He's a disgraced prince whose father needs pagan magic to consolidate his power. Gaspar fears that his cruelly zealous brother plans to seize the throne and instigate a violent reign that would damn the pagans and the Yahuli alike. As the son of a re reveled foreign queen, Gaspar understands what it's like to be an outcast and he and Evic make a tenuous pact to stop his brother as their mission takes them from the bitter northern tundra to the smog chokes capital their mutual loathing slowly turns to affection how did i guess that um where did i lose bound by a shared history of alienation and oppression you know that is called trauma bonding <laughs> I've become that person that's been to therapy a few times and now I'm telling everybody that they got trauma that is now me. <laughs> but that, that does sound like a trauma bond. Like y'all are bonding because y'all both experienced similar bad things. Who wants that? Um. However, trust can easily turn to betrayal as Evic reconnects with her estranged father and discovers her own hidden magic she and Gaspar need to decide whose side they're on and what they're willing to give up for a nation that never cared for them at all so this sounds really interesting I've heard really good things about it I've been wanting to get into fantasy more which I made that video of all the fantasy that I wanted to read and have not read any of those books I also like that the pages have designs on them I think that's really cool okay how many more books do we have to go? I think we're like halfway through y'all. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Maybe not halfway through. Okay, I got The Maidens by Alex McAleedes. He wrote the, what is, what is the name of that book? The Patient? The Silent Patient, which I read last year, which was okay. It wasn't a terrible book, but I got this too. I believe that this is also a, like similar to the silent patient where it is about a murder um it says edward fosca is a murder of this mariana is certain but fosca is untouchable a handsome characterist char charismatic charismatic greek tragedy professor at cambridge university fosca is adored by staff and students alike particularly by the members of a secret society of female students known as the maidens so, she's going to prove him to be a murderer, I guess. I don't know. But this, I wanted to read it because The Silent Patient wasn't what everybody hyped it up to be. But that does not mean that it was a bad book. Does that make sense? Okay. I think um, that the areas of it that I was just like, eh, this is kind of boring, boring is because it was his debut novel. I think that they could be fixed in here. So I got that. Sisters in Arms by Kia Alderson. This is, uh, let me tell you a funny story real quick. So I was reading the synopsis of this to my cousin, to my cousin, Jesus Christ, to my best friend the couple of nights ago. And I've never seen the word battalion written out before. I've only heard the word like in movies. I've never seen the word don't know how i thought it was spelled but in here it talks about the six triple eighth central postal directory battalion and i said what is a battalion <laughs> and then i quickly followed it up with <laughs> i can read girl i do it for fun <laughs> and ah, my best friend was like battalion sis keep reading but anyway this is about Grace Steele and Eliza Jones, who come from completely different black backgrounds, but they were two black women in the Central Postal Directory Battalion, the 6 
um and it's supposed to be a story about how they deal with racism and bless you mommy and inclusion in the military um being the only black women so on and so forth and it is based on the true story of the six triple eight central postal directing battalion um it explores the untold story of what life is like for the only all black female u.s battalion to be deployed overseas during world war ii so i was really interested in this um i like historical fic blah, blah, blah. i like historical fiction um and yeah it's just interesting like stories that you never hear i feel like you get one type of story from um world war ii and this is something different again black women on the cover had to have it then we've got a book that's really really popular right now he is cute he is real cute um ace of spades by farida abaki iemidi iemidi i don't know i'll ask my best friend later um it is a YA book so this says when two Navias private school academy students devon richards and chiamaka Adi Bayo are selected to be a part of the school's senior prefects. It looks like their year is off to an amazing start. After all, not only does it look great on college applications, but it officially puts them in the running for val valedictorian too. Shortly after the announcement is made, though, someone who goes by Ace begins sending anonymous text messages to reveal secrets about the two of them that turn their lives upside down and threaten every aspect of their carefully planned futures as ace aces shows no sign of stopping what seemed like a sick prank quickly turns into a dangerous game and with all the cards stacked against them can devin and chiamaka stop aces before things become incredibly deadly so this might be a book pick for the end of the year for show me in the book club because it's a YA it'll be a super simple read um and it just sounds super interesting when we read um children of blood and bone that kind of changed my mind about <laughs> about YA because I was just like I didn't read YA when I was a young adult so why am I gonna read it now but I think this is gonna be really good so I'm curious to see excuse me how it is so, Ace of Spades. And I've heard really good things about it. So, we'll see what happens. Next, we have The House of Deep Water. This says, River Bend, Michigan is the kind of small town most can't imagine leaving, but three women couldn't wait to escape. When each of, when each must return, Linda Williams, never sure what she wants, her mother, Paula, always too sure, and Beth Dwight, one of River Bend's only black daughters, now mother to two who plan to raise their children anywhere else, their paths collide under Beth's father's roof. As one town struggles to contain all of their love, affairs, and secrets, a local scandal forces Beth to confront her own devastating past. Um, I'm going to be honest, I bought this one because of the book cover. It just looks really nice. And that could be a black woman. Like, she has a tan. She's a woman of color, at least. Um, so it just looks really interesting. It was another one of those books that was kind of like calling me off the shelf, like, psst, 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 take me home with you. So I did. Um, next, something that you guys probably would have never thought to see on my channel. Jane Austen books. I've got Pride and the Prejudice and I've got Persuasion. I'm not going to read the synopsis to you because y'all should know who Jane Austen is at this point. Pride and the Prejudice is one of my favorite movies. <laughs> like of all time it is definitely a comfort film for me um but I've never read the book ever um this I did read in college but I don't remember which makes me feel like I probably Sparks notes it no I probably read it and I just retained what I needed to write an essay about it and then that was it so I got these two I want to read these eventually more importantly, I want to read Pride and Prejudice because it's one of my favorites. Next on the list, 
is something a little different that I've never showed on this channel. So I really, really, really like comic books. Um, I don't own many, um, but I really like them. I'm a big fan of the Marvel movies and the comics. Um, so yeah, that's something that you probably didn't know about me, which is why I picked up a comic book about the Black Panther Party. <laughs> I thought this was really, really cool. Um, I think there's a lot of black history that is um not taught because people feel like they don't necessarily know how to explain such touchy situations or such touchy topics to children right like how do you explain certain things to kids so that they can understand and so that it's not scary to them or so on and so forth and then it's just really hard to have uncomfortable conversations with um children i think putting it in something like this like a comic book is really really cool because if i had this as a kid i probably would have read this 10 times over and i would have been really really interested in it because it puts it in a way that kids can understand so i thought this was really really cool i got this from um a local bookstore and I think I'm going to start collecting comic books. I, I need to move. That's that's what that's what needs to happen. I need to move so that I can have a room dedicated to my books because girl, where where I can barely fit it's stressful, okay? Next we have We Run the Tides by Vidalia Vita. I really like the name Ella B. Teenage Ella B and her magnetic best friend Maria Fabiola, Fabiola own the streets of Seacliff, their foggy oceanside San Francisco neighborhood. They know Seacliff's homes, beaches, its hidden corners, eccentric characters, as well as the upscale all girl school they attend. One day, walking to school with friends, they witness a horrible act. Or do they? Ella B and Maria vehemently disagree on what happened and their rupture is followed by maria's sudden disappearance a potential kidnapping that shakes the quiet community and threatens to expose uncertain unspoken truths. suspense and poignant we run the tides is vidalia vita's masterful portrait portrait of the place on the brink of radical transformation pre-tech booth san francisco finds its mirror and the changing lives of teenage girls at the center of the story of innocence lost, the pain of too much freedom, and the struggle to find oneself, one's authentic self. This sounds really good. This is another one, like I saw it, and the cover was different, and I was just like, yeah, girl, you need that. Next, we have The Great Offshore, Offshore Grounds. By Vanessa Veselka. Isn't that beautiful? This might be something that was translated, I think. Or maybe not. Maybe I'm just assuming too much. Um. On the day of their estranged father's wedding, half-sisters Cheyenne and Libby set off to claim their inheritance. It's been years since the two have seen each other. Cheyenne is newly back in Seattle, crashing with Libby after a failed marriage and series of dead ends. Libby works refinishing boats, her resentment against her freeloading sister growing as she tamps down dreams of fishing off the coast of Alaska. But the promise of a shot at financial security brings the two together to claim what's theirs, except instead of money, what their father gives them is information and name, which both reveals a stunning family secret and compels them to come to grips with it. In the face of their new reality, the sisters and their adopted brother each set out on journeys that will test their faith in one another, as well as their definitions of freedom. I, this sounded really really interesting um another one that i picked up because of the um book cover but when i read the synopsis i was just like oh that sounds really interesting um 
but it's also like a million pages long 420 something pages so I don't know when I'll read this but it it, it sounds really really interesting um because when you find out that you don't know nothing about your parents it's it's a uh, very interesting the next we have um heavy by I believe it's Keith Lehman um I have a hard copy of this I got this from the literati book or I got my hardcover from the literati book club um because I'm a part of Jasmine Ward's book club on there and I've been wanting to read this for a while but I know that it is dark um so it's in this powerful and provocative memoir Keith Layman fearlessly explores what the weight of a lifetime of secrets, lives, and deceptions does to a black body, a black family, and a nation teetering on the brink of moral collapse. From his early experiences in his life as a college professor, Layman charts his complex relationship with his family, weight, sex, gambling, and writing. Defiant, vul vulnerable, and insightful, heavy named secrets Layman spent named secrets Layman spent a lifetime avoiding and also asks all of us to confront the terrifying possi possibility that few of us know how to responsibly love which I think is true a lot of people don't know love without trauma because they've never experienced love without trauma and even when they come to a situation where they can experience love without trauma when you haven't had it before it, it fight or flight kind of kicks in so there's that so next we have Heaven My Home by Attica Locke. Um, this is a Highway 59 novel, but I don't know if this is, I may have gotten this out of order. I don't know. I have to look it up, but this is another suspense. We are reading one of her books for the book club. I just don't remember which one off the top of my head right now. There's so many things in my brain. I don't remember which one right now. Um, but this says nine-year-old Levy King knew he should have gone home sooner. Alone in the darkness of vast Cotto Lake in a boathouse, in a boat whose motor just died, he hears a sudden noise before all goes dark. Texas Ranger Darren Matthews is trying to emerge from another kind of darkness. His marriage in the precarious state of rebuilding and his career and reputation lying in the hands of his untrustworthy mother and he's eager to escape this new case eager to escape into a new case up highway 59 levy's disappearance has links to darren's last case and to a wealthy businesswoman the boy's grandmother who seems more concerned about the fate of her business than her grandson as darren races to find the boy gunner Sorry, y'all. As Darren races to find the boy, he must also battle the small lakeside town. Centuries old suspicions and prejudices as well as the threats that have been reignited in the tense political climate. I've heard really, really good things about Attica's writing. Um, I've never read any of her books. That's why it's going to be... That's why one of them is a book pick for this year. Um, these next few we're going to go through quickly because my dog is not going to stop. Um, next we have All the Murmuring Bones. This is a Greek retelling. I like Greek retellings. I recently read... What is the name of that book, Jesus? I don't know. And it's not... Oh, A Thousand Ships by Natalie Haynes. It was a book club pick for the Patreon book club. Again, if you are not signed up for that please do sign up it's a whole bunch of fun um and it's only ten dollars a month but but um i didn't necessarily enjoy that one too much because i thought it was going to be something that it wasn't but i heard really good things about this one um so i'm really excited um i'm not going to read the synopsis to you it's a greek retelling it at look it up Next, we have another book by um, Keith Lehman, Long Division. This one I got, um, one, because of who it's by. I didn't know he had a novel, and apparently this one came out before his 
um memoir did so this says told in two separate stories and written with sharp humor and deep humanity long division is an ambitious mix of contemporary southern gothic and murakami-esque magical realism Ooh, and the first of the two stories set in 2013 14 year old 14 year old city colson becomes an overnight YouTube celebrity after an on-stage meltdown during a nation nationally televised can you use that word in a sentence contest. The next day, he's sent to stay with his grandmother in a small Mississippi community where a young girl named Bay Shepherd is recently disappeared. Before leaving, City is given a strange book called Long Division without an author. He learns that one of the book's main characters is also named City Colson, but Long Division is set in 1985. City's two stories ultimately converge in the work shed behind his grandmother's house, where he discovers the key to Baze's disappearance. Intimately attuned to the confusion of young Black Americans who live under the shadow of the history that they gropingly understand, this dreamlike novel works shows the work young black people must do in a country where racialized inequality is persistent but mutable that the past is not the present but isn't but isn't either entirely past this actually sounds really really good um and i can't wait to read this okay so my vanishing country so, part memoir, part historical and cultural analysis, My Vanishing Country is an eye-opening journey through the South's past, present, and future. In Sella's poetic personal history, we are awakened to the crisis affecting the other forgotten men, men and women who media solemn acknowledges. Seller humanizes the struggles that shape their lives to gain access to health care as rural hospitals disappear to make ends meet as the factories they have relied on shut down and more and move overseas to hold on to precious traditions as their towns erode and forge a path forward without succumbing to despair my vanishing country honors the spirit and the soul of resilient communities who are last seen and finally heard this reminds me a lot of Jasmine Ward's um it sounds like my mom is taking the dog outside um this reminds me a lot of Jasmine Ward's um memoir The Men We Reaped um whereas she talks about her life and then not necessarily history but like men that have passed in her life and how it has affected her so I think this might be set up in the same way I also love memoirs that's another reason why I wanted to read heavy is because I love, love memoirs. I love reading about, excuse me, other people's lives and their perspective of their lives. Like, it broadens your, your view of the world because you really only know what's in your little bubble and you know about like your friends and some of your family depending on if you are a question asker and if you are nosy and want to know about everybody's lives or not um so i'm really really interested in reading that as well um and then last but not least we have a walter mosley book that i had never heard of um this is down the river unto the sea and it is another detective book that is not a easy rollins book so i picked it up because i was just like I know I hadn't read everything by Walter Mosley, but I thought I had known about most of his books. So seeing something that I've never seen before, heard of before, and I'm not sure if my mom has heard of this one before either, but I picked it up. Um, it says, Joe King Oliver was one of the NYPD's finest investigators until he was framed for a sexual assault by unknown enemies within the force. A decade has passed since his Released from Rikers, and he now runs a private detective agency with the help of his teenage daughter. Physically and emotionally broken by the brutality he suffered while behind bars, King leads a solitary life, his work, and his daughter, the only lights. When he receives a letter from his accuser confessing that 
she was paid to frame him years ago king decides to find out who wanted him gone and why on a quest for justice he was denied king agrees to help a radical black journalist accused of killing two on-duty police officers their case cases intertwine across the years and expose a pattern of correct, corruption brutality wielded against the black men women and children whose lives the law destroyed all the while two lives hang in the balances in the balance king's client and his own this sounds really really good this is another thing i was supposed to be reading the easy rolling series and i ain't really got to that either so we just gonna say that that didn't happen um and i feel bad about it but i'm not gonna feel bad about it because this year has been interesting so that was my book haul i probably won't be buying any books for a while because I, I have I, I have an, I have enough I have enough what's that TikTok <laughs> no more slices that is enough that is enough slices that's how I feel about my book collection even though I'm I know eventually I will buy more books um actually there's one more thing that I guess maybe not just one more but dang I don't know where the other one is I did get some books from what is the dang page one book subscription so they sent me liberty um here this isn't the particular copy but they sent me liberty by caitlin caitlin greenwich this is my book of the month copy but page one subscription sent it to me as well i just it's not in my reach um so that's something new that i also got um excuse me and we'll be reading eventually but that is everything if you have made it to this part in the video, <laughs> the end, let me know in the comment. I appreciate in the comments. I appreciate you. Um, and that is everything that I've got. If no one has told you today, I love you and I will talk to you guys soon. Bye guys.